you really well. I heard you whisper. Well, it was a really loud stage whisper. So. <laughs> Look, I'm running out of air. What does that mean? I need a test. Oh, stop it. No. Can you still smell things? Can you smell me? Yes. I can't hear you that well, but I can smell you. That's great technology. You can smell me. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I've got a million questions for you. I have I mean, a million questions for you. I know a lot of them answers because we know each other. Of questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it turns out we know each other, so yes. I know things. Um, I know we do. We do. We know each other, so we have a little. We're a slight disagreement, but we're going to pretend that we don't. I, I know. What? By the way, one of the questions that was suggested that I ask is um, if you can remember. Um, any episodes of Friends that we did together, and I mean, we were in every <laughs> we were in, in every episode together. So I just thought that we was were, really good, funny. That made that's, laugh. that's a that was a great question. Do you remember any episodes we were in together? I don't know. It's really not. I don't think we ever appeared in the same screenshots. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. But we did a lot. Anyway. We did. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, for some reason, I kept thinking about. I was thinking about uh, the the one with the the fire alarm. But I don't even think I was in that one with you. The one where you could. I don't know even what you're talking about. Talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you said the one with anything after, I'd go, yeah, yeah, that episode. <laughs> the one with the fire alarm sounds made up. It wasn't the title of it. It was, you know, the little disc, the fire alarm that you couldn't, and you would, it, it's, it was possessed. Oh, I remember. That was in well, I see, remember. Was apartment. The special will be fine. And you couldn't, you took the battery out, you, and then you smashed it, and you rolled it up in a blanket, and then you threw it down the fire incinerator, incinerator trash, yes. what are they called? And then the police showed up with it, and it yeah. says property of Phoebe <laughs> Buffet. <laughs> I just remember Joey looks at naked pictures of us while he eats and he eats chicken. <laughs> and I didn't get the line right. Joey eats chicken. He looks at naked pictures of it. He eats chicken and he looks. I don't remember it either. Let's not do that. I don't remember any of my barely any of my lines. Yeah. Well, that's wait, Floosh, Tell me how I can't call you Floosh. They'll be like, "Why am I calling you that, Lisa?" Right. That's so. And weird. I can't call you Jew because. Well, no. even though it's spelled J-O-O. J-O-O-O-O. O-O-O-O. Um, wait, do you actually remember when you first met me? Like when we first yes, met Yes, I do. At the table read. Yeah. At, you remember what everyone was wearing, but. Um... I do. <laughs> you were wearing an appropriate Phoebe Buffet, like a white linen hippie shirt. And you had a yeah. bunch of like seashells and necklaces on. And you had your hair pulled up in two little uh, clips. And you had these little d blonde tendrils. Oh, God bless. So, so, so beautiful. Oh. And Courtney had on a, a pink baby tee with a white trim. Gee so whiz. I was trying to get into the character. I know. You still thought you were auditioning and you actually already had the job. Well, what what did you wear? That I don't remember. Oh, I just remember meeting you and oh my God, and went, okay, that's Rachel, got it, yeah. And there was Phoebe, it, was, it wasn't was that kind of a magical, magical moment, the- Yep. Because we'd never, I mean, I'd met Court, obviously, and I'd known Perry, Matthew forever, but, it was to, to sort of hear everybody all together and the voices just having imagined it for, for so long was just kind of like, whoa, is this good? Yeah. This is, what's happening? Yeah, everyone was such a surprise. I was just, just reeling from how surprisingly, not surprisingly good. It was just everyone's take was, oh, didn't see that coming. And I think, you know, yeah. you need that for comedy. You, you absolutely do, because hopefully that's what the, the audience feels. Yeah, exactly. It was really fun. And then you did the morning show. 
right after. <laughs> My gut instinct is to bring the news to America, myself, honestly. Addressing the truth is the only way to protect our integrity. So we will talk to them as members of our family. We will grieve with them. We will go through this together. I just oh, thought that God. was a good segue. It's not great segue. Abrupt at all. Yes. But it's my favorite show. Watched Stop it. all of them the minute we could. My husband and I both. And we have a hard time finding shows we can both watch together, by the way. Um, it's just everything about it is great. Thanks, honey. It's really entertaining. It's always good. And <laughs> no, and that, <laughs> and that it's just so well written. It's it's about something. It's so beautifully performed. You blew me away. Bless your heart. Thanks, honey. Completely. You know, no, when you were Alex Levy, the, Le, Levy or Levy? Levy, 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 yeah. Levy, tomato, tomato. I mean, you know. I know, but the Dan Eugene Levies are very Levy. Yeah. So you have to this be. Is, she's Levy. She's very yeah, Levy. That's right. No, but so completely the morning show host that I, it wasn't you anymore. And that's what was just really thrilling. After it was done, I would go, wait, that was Jennifer. Oh my God. You don't understand, of course, coming from Lisa, I'm speaking to this so said audience that is maybe watching this, but coming from you who literally, the amount of the characters that you portray cons consistently over the, all of the years of knowing you, I, it, I never see Lisa, ever. Like you have, you, you, so this is, this is just quite a, I'm, I'm really moved whenever I get a, like a, a good review from, from you. It really, oh. it, it really hits deeply into my, my heart of, and gratitude. And I say, thank you. I really just well, so sweet, honey. Thank you. But you did the work. It was just really clear. Like you were this other person and you are poised, but it was a different, it was a different shade of poise, maturity, you know, oh, it was just, it was just really thrilling. You know, thank you. I've been really fortunate in the last, um, I would say about seven years, I met this one, this incredible woman who I break scripts down with and just discovered, like, I feel like I discovered a whole new doorway into what we do, into acting that I'd never in all the years even sort of thought about. I mean, I've had also, I've always had different sort of ways that I would prepare or, you know, but it was, oh, I always dreaded it. I was, every time I'd go to work, I, and there's a lot of actors I know who just hate, it's torture for them to right. be actors. You know what right. I mean? No, it's like, how am I going to do today? Am I? Yeah. 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 And it's like the, fir the first time since working with Nancy, Nancy Banks is her name, that I literally feel like I have a whole new, it's like I learned, I have like a whole new tool belt. Yeah. And it, it, it makes it less um, terrifying and, and, and more exciting. And also, I think also just being older, I have way less to do about nothing, you know? I miss you. I miss you too. I like your... Oh, the cornrows. Yeah. Oh yeah, my roommate did it. Yeah, it's not appropriation when they do it to you. Oh. <laughs> the, the Space Force character the show, how did you, wasn't there a big secret around that? I just remember hearing a story that you didn't know there was a space where you weren't allowed to know something about Space Force or, or. No, not, not allowed. Just dipshit didn't know that it was a real oh. thing. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I didn't know. And luckily it doesn't matter. Weren't you so excited though to get that job when you heard, oh my gosh, I get to work with Steve Carell? Yes. Yes. He's heaven. He's so, I mean, okay. He's great. He's a human being, right? Yep. So very much a human being. Yes. 
it that it was it was really fun. I mean, I was only there on that show for five days, but it was every for the day whole was, time. Yeah. All of your whole body of work was was done in five days. Yeah, yeah, that's how I do things. <laughs> By the way, like it. Sign me that's up. That's how I do things. Thanks, Netflix. Yeah, that was like for uh, feel good too. It was just like one week, but it was also you know. God, I love that show. I love Feel Good. Isn't it good? Oh, Feel Good made me feel so good. You're so mean. Uh, yeah, she's uh... a... You're, you're really... It's an incredible how... I mean, isn't it fun, though, to play that? Yeah. Uh, care, those mean people. Yes, but I get concerned when I really completely understand and sympathize. <laughs> right, with the mean person. But that's why you have, you have to. You have to sympathize with... I did, because, you know, if my daughter had been an addict and, you know, we had to kick her out of the house and then I come to find, and she's re recovered, and come to find that she's not in any, uh, you know, um, addict anonymous groups or programs, what? narcotics anonymous, yeah, then, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I'd be super freaked and angry. Of course you would. And angry for all the years that I had to worry. The worry. And now you still do. And God damn it, let me have a glass of wine while I get really pissed off about this. Yeah. And still a and still a little angry. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Because it yeah. Because that's what that character was. At the end of the day, it's really about them in a way. Because it's Yeah. It's my daughter. I've raised you. What? I did it wrong? Like don't you know, all that stuff that I just uh <laughs> decided worked. And May was really, really open and, and uh and just gave me a lot of background for that character, which is, I think it's loosely based on, but her mother's not that person. But her mother's not that person. No. Well, I got it. I don't know. I haven't met her. Well, we don't know. Um, yeah. In my drug support group, one of the things that they said is that sometimes everybody feels better if they just address the elephant in the room. Everyone feels better or you feel better? Well, <laughs> she's always had a very addictive personality. I don't know where she gets that from. Anyway, look, there's a lot to talk about with Morning Show. So if can, do you mind if I pivot? No, pivot, pivot, David Schwimmer. Now, I know you've produced before and many things. Um, producing this was a series. How did you decide that that's something you wanted to do? Oh, was it the was, idea first or was it, it was, oh, now I want to be on a series? No, I was talking to Michael Ellenberg at, it was at my Christmas party. And I know, I've known Michael since he did, he was one of the producers on The Leftovers. And, which was one of Mimi's brilliant, you know, another extraordinary show that was created and she directed. Um, and I said, he was talking about some, oh, and I, I, it just sort of came up where I said, you know, I'm not opposed to going back to television if it's the best, if it's a great piece of work, you know, if it's a great part, a great idea. And he said, are you serious? And I said, yeah. And he said, I haven't, I haven't, I, I, I know what it is. I know what it is. And then he sort of he sort of gave me the outline of because he had just read top of the morning and he had just he just acquired the rights of top of the morning oh it was called top of the morning top of the morning which was the book um and so not based on like our show isn't based it was just so so then he went into aline's my managers and pitched the idea and they came to me and i said absolutely and he said also we were and the idea of having you and reese come in to do this together would be brilliant and i said that's another extraordinary piece of this yeah, yeah puzzle and also when he explained you know pitched the show which it's but you know behind the scenes of the new york morning talk shows and new york media and of course i mean i loved those were that was such a it was such comfort for me growing up watching those I didn't even listen necessarily. It was just knowing their mom and pop were up there on the screen and right. it felt very comfortable yeah. just hearing them. And once in a while you'd stop and go, oh my God, the world's ending. But right. they're still there, so we're okay. Yes. Which I still do to this day. <laughs> Me too. Right? 
just like they're just such a like a source like such a comfort I feel like they're okay and they're if they haven't broken down into tears yet we're okay yeah, you know, sort of like when I, when I my irrational fear of flying. If I look at this, the 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 flight attendant and they're not panicking, we're okay. Right, that I would agree. Make sense. Well, but anyway, so that's how we we got involved, and it kind of just took off from there. And it was um, it kind of then wrote itself. So right, we we had almost the uh, all of the, and then of course just acquiring our crew and our cast and you know, shaping it and was so interesting because there was so much, there was so much material to mine. And then also, right. We had at least like three or four of the scripts outlined and then me too happened. So, Oh, that's what I was to... wondering. The, yeah. The chronology of that, the timeline, right. What was it before that then? It was, um, it still dealt, it still dealt with like inequality and discrimination and sexual harassment and all of that. And just the, the sort of competition between the networks and the cutthroat, you know, how, how certain anchors will time each other out. They'll, they'll, their stories will run long to sort of cut into someone else's segment. I mean, this, there was a lot of dark stuff that went behind the scenes, but then when, when me too happened, then we had to, stop and refocus and incorporate all of that into the um, story as well, which it, uh, sadly fit in quite easily. <laughs> well, you already had the, you already had sort of the Mitch who was uh, crossing lines. Yes. So to speak. Yes. And yes, so that, and, and the, and the woman in ageism, my character, yeah. being, you know, wanting that someone new cause you know, after you hit 40, that's it. We got to find us a new someone. Um, right. So there was a lot of things that were really fun uh, and there to, to play with, but then it, we, we still, yeah, we did. We had it all there. So it was great. Wow. So now how, how long did that take? Like once you realize oh, we have to address me too now. Well, we, 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 pitched we sold the show in 2016 and we didn't get to start shooting it until 2018. oh my god so 20 summer of 2016 right and then the uh then that's when Har the harvey weinstein stuff came out right and then the you know matt lauer so it was like a year a year 60 70 so it's like two years of two two years and change till we shot the first episode Wow. Yeah. But you yeah. were pretty involved. I mean, you were all like very involved with the scripts, yeah. with the, all of it, right? Like the well, tone all of it, and... I mean, we got, that's what I loved about Carrie Aaron, our, our showrunner and head writer. We got, Reese and I both got to sit with her individually and talk about what, 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 what portraits of this character, this archetype are we like, who am I? And I, of course, bow to, Diane Sawyer and I kind of the poise and ease and grace that which she she delivers every single thing even the way she you know reads the phone book which I guess people don't do anymore but right she she I just I felt like that's that's who I I, I kind of modeled her after yeah uh, and Reese got to then talk to to Carrie about who where she was because there wasn't no you know because she's kind of plucked out of nowhere um to be in this environment in this world she didn't really that was sort of what was fun for reese because she could just define herself she didn't want to be defined by any anybody yeah so oh that's interesting and then just and just being able to 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 find our you know corey's and chips and mitch and and steve was our very first want for mitch that was yeah like, perfect too our, our dream and never thought in a million years he would say yes yeah and then he said yes so but it's such so smart because you trust him and you love him like no matter what steve carell sorry if he wants to be more right. sinister yeah. no there's no there's no skeleton you, you couldn't ask another actor to play that part it's a tough it's because of steve's inherent goodness and and 
you know, not that he's like a, your, your dad, but I guess it is. You just felt so comforted. You feel comforted by, by him. He emits decency. Yes. So, Absolutely. you know, and, and sometimes that's, that's the uh, unfair thing about certain men. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what is so disarming and how you know. so many women. Well, they find themselves, you know, in those situations and thinking, oh, this is, oh, whoa, <laughs> what's happening? Yeah, he's, but he's a nice guy. Everyone respects him and yeah, yeah, yeah. They take advantage of, of, uh, of that, those men. Yeah, he was, he did it really, really well. But it's also because those characters, that character has such a sense of, he's such, there's such a narcissism there that he is, there is no way, it, it feel it's like, it, it to, to him, he, it, it seems like it would be an honor for this person to have this inter interaction, you know? They're sort of blissfully unaware of right. how screwed up they are. And yeah, what are they doing exactly. wrong? What's wrong with, yeah. with what I'm doing? I'm, I'm me. And Steve understood every piece of that too. It was, which was so great. Gorgeous. But I also was really interested watching it. I mean, maybe just as a fan, how complicated it is for Alex Levy, who sat next to him every single day. How much did she know? If she did, is it any of her business? It's so complicated. What's a woman's choice and what's, uh, how is she being uh, victimized? Victimized and also how, the women that are complicit who are standing there on the sidelines knowing that it's, it's taking place and it's just, oh, that's what they do. It was such a norm. It was such a norm. It didn't, we, there was no, I don't think any, a lot of those women felt that it was an abuse. I think they felt it was obviously mutual. So that's their business, not my business. Or, right. you know, is it an abuse of power? And whatever it is, no one's going to listen to me if I say anything. So it doesn't matter. Right. right? Yeah. And I just want to, you know, keep my head down, just walk forward, do my job and get home and try to stay relevant. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, you're swimming as fast as you can. Right. to stay afloat. But that was really interesting to watch, that grapple. And then that last episode was mind-blowing. Um, perfectly done. I, that was a crazy I never know, because like, these are streamed, right? And people watch. From, <laughs> it's like a movie, and you don't want to tell the end in case nobody has seen it. But um, Right. I don't, I oh, don't know. I know what you mean. Right, because not everybody has seen the ending. But No, it was just an incredible performance. Your depiction of Alex's sort of breakdown in that last episode, I've never seen anything done like that. It, it, it felt so real and not painful because she was sort of out of her body, it felt. Is that what? A hundred percent. It you was just talk. How on earth did you approach that? I think it's, 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 uh, uh... I know I don't really it's hard I don't remember that back that far unfortunately but I just remember that it was supposed to be a very uh it was a it was it was just a boiling point and I think it was just all of the the years and then once Hannah's death happened and then just all all of it kind of boiled and it just and exploded and it happened to happen right when it was yeah when we were on air and I think I just did sort of float out of my body and I didn't give a shit. And it was a little bit like, I'm mad as hell and I'm you know, not gonna take it anymore. Yeah. And it felt, there's a lot of moments where you just feel, uh, I think it's also something about being this age and knowing and having heard these stories over and over, over the last year, few years, there is such a rage that we as women are carrying and hearing what so many, women walked through and had to deal with. Yeah. And it was like this, this rage for all women. Yeah. We've all heard stories when they were happening. I mean, I, yeah. And, and you just know, oh my God, there's no recourse. There's no recourse. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do. What do I tell my friend? Oh my God. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. 
and it's too big. It's too big. That man world thing, the corporations, there's no way. What are we going to do? It's going to be him again, his word against mine. Yeah. So it was a, it was a quite a, a, a fulfilling experience in, in that sense. So it was an expression of that. Yeah. Yeah. God. It was just so great. I mean, and there were these like moments where it looked like you were sort of completely aware of what was happening and what you were doing, but it, it just was bigger than you. And, oh, I don't know. Oof. I love you. Thanks, I can't take it. it was it. I'm so sweating. good. I can't, I can't mop my, 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 my sweat because you're making me so blushy. Really? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> well, you don't look sweaty. Um, and then what about, so with Reese and you guys, I'm sure, because you were both producing this and so you both had talked a lot. Did you both like talk a lot, a lot about, I'm just wondering about your characters and their relationship and how this would arc and, you know, cause it was also kind of thrilling and, um, and then throwing you off balance. That was a fantastic roller coaster also. That relationship. Yes, but for Alex, I mean, Alex would seem to like, okay, I'm gonna, it, it felt like Alex didn't have a lot of women in her life. No, 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 so, no, she was, she was in the boys club. I, she reminds me of kind of Shirley MacLaine who was always hanging out with the Rat Pack, you know, there was, yeah. I think she was very uh, determined and it was, there, you know, she had her family and she had her, her work was number one, obviously. And yeah. also that when that, when Reese's, when Bradley comes in, there's such a, whoa, inferiority, but yet she sort of worships her and thinks she's awesome. But then she's terrified and intimidated and so many, it's such a, it's such a roller coaster relationship throughout the whole, it's such a love hate. And it really did feel like a love story between two women in a way. Yes. Um, I just love that you all embraced all those, the insecurities that fed in, that that's what it's based on too. And, oh, yeah, keep, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. That was dumb. No, not at all. But just again, there's, there's so many dynamics of, of women and how women treat each other. You know, women are, women are pretty hard on women, uh, ultimately. Yeah. And it's, it's, that's something that you and I have never, experienced especially when we had the luxury of shooting our show we were just yeah. girlfriends were everything supporters. yeah so yes but you and i was saying that we don't we never experienced that kind of no. cutthroat behind the scenes of uh, on on competition on any jobs any set anything me too i never understood i never understood that and luckily i never i don't think i ever experienced it or I don't see it. I just don't yes. see it. I know. I I think I I I'm very. I won't. I won't see it. If even if it's there, I, I will pretend it's not happening. Yeah, I won't. If I have, have if I have ever had a glimpse of it, I just won't. You right. Know, subscribe I, I to that that kind of behavior. Right. There's no reason on earth. We're all doing what we want to do. We all know that we are lucky grateful that we get to do what we want to do so where's yeah. the complaint like what's the right. <laughs> where's the issue there's enough there's abundance we're all here and we're all doing room it. for everybody but i think in that world of broadcasting is th that it is about relevance it's about staying relevant there isn't such a vast you know we have we have way more opportunity than than they do yeah and it is all about yeah. staying relevant it's like keeping that ring it's like the I've got to stay on top. I mean, you have to have some sort of a drive in you to want to wake up at three o'clock in the morning for 25 years of your life. Right. To, so I don't know what's, something is really driving those, those people. I, I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy profession. Yeah, you did your research for that, for sure. Mm -hmm. I did, right. yeah, I got to, went to New York. I went to the Morning America, Good Morning America, it's five in the morning. Just such a crazy train that gets going at five from five to seven. That's just like a ghost town, and they live in these vampire these vampire existences where they're all awake throughout the night, digesting 
awful information and thank god there's a cooking segment so some liberty can come into the moment for a bit you know oh but uh it's 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 quite a moving train that that gets just smoking hot going at by by seven o'clock somehow you don't even know that there was all that was happening in the background all that was going on revving up to that moment of you know four three two good morning it just yeah seems so effortless and yet it's like in that control room it's like a mad dash everybody's even the you know our, our the producer the the chip character he was like you know i i i very well much must have add but this is my adderall this this schedule is my adderall he's like oh, who needs it <laughs> totally wow totally works for me god yeah. yeah he was great too my god yeah yeah lucky we're lucky yeah, great cast. yeah. and then there's the reading and pre i mean that's it's it's presenting news it's you forget yeah and then catching up all night i don't know ah. you know like you go to a i'd see alex at a charity event and i'm wondering wait no how don't you have to what you have to go to bed and read don't you what? think every time i ever see gail <laughs> king or or when there's like the all any award show or any kind of breaking news and they're out there and it's late i'm going like, you are going to be awake in three hours yeah you gotta get up they don't even sleep sometimes they just don't go to bed we are doing this my way because frankly i've let you bozos handle this long enough Not the apology you were expecting. Who approached you with Space Force? Well, I, I heard from my agents, Greg Daniels, and I was thrilled because I've known Greg since 1986. Because <laughs> that's when I met Conan, and he and Conan like drove out here and back east because they were riding partners. So I became oh, friends with Oh, you're kidding! Conan. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and and so yeah, and I just. There was part of me that was always sort of like, huh, Craig never wonders if I want to do, you know, that actor thing, like, huh, I've known him a long shows. time. Yes. But right. I mean, I was busy, um, <laughs> but exactly. Um, so I was thrilled that, you know, Greg's doing this show with Steve and, you know, they want to know if you want to do it. And then Steve sent me a text saying, it'll be fun. Play my wife. And I just thought, well, why on earth? Would I not? Let's say, oh, and I should read it. And I read it and thought, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is interesting. And uh, yes, 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 of course. And it was five days, so that's always appealing to me. <laughs> that's always a good yes, ma'am. I will, that sounds like fun. I feel like our life now is kind of like what your character was in a way. Yes. You know? I had all these wigs for like different sizes of root and stuff, and yeah. But what about the one where you had the cornrows with your with your with, when your daughter came to visit you? Yes, I did have cornrows. That wasn't a wig. But were that was that a wig or was no. that you? No, that was that was my hair. By the way, do you know how gorgeous you look in cornrows? <laughs> that is, and uh, look, I didn't know not you, Bo Derek, and Courtney Cox. I think can pull off cornrows. Well, I bet you'd look great too. Uh uh. In cornrows. I mean, it's. But no, that was incredible. So you, uh, and 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 you. So you really had no. You went. You did everything in five days. Just five days. Yes. For all of those scenes, because most of them take took place in the in the cell, right? Yes. Well, the unfortunate thing I think for the very first day was um, <laughs> when I'm still not entirely sure about what I'm going to do. And it's the first day and we're shooting the, the episode where I have the most to do with the uh, conjugal visit. Yes, and yes, yes. So <laughs> that was the first day. And so that was, that was a lot, but you know, that was the other fantastic thing. Steve, so great, right? Yes. Messing up. So I feel okay about messing up, right? Um, Greg Daniels and, um, Paul, oh, I'm going to get it wrong, but I should know it. Uh, Lieberstein, Lieber, from The Office. He's a phenomenal writer, but he played Toby in The Office. So he's writing on the show, and everyone they have who's writing is fantastic. But, boy, they, they, 
they were so great about, yep, not feeling exactly right. Let's, let's figure, let's figure this out. You know, let's meaning let's the scene wasn't that. feeling exactly right so that they would sort of stop yes. in between takes and then they would kind of workshop it. Yeah. We'd and then say, let's try this. Figure it out. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Oh, it I love so, that environment. Yes. I loved that environment. Really just creative and everyone focused on the scene, the show, that not, well, but I wrote it and that's how we're going to do it, which can happen, you know, um, right. but just that they were all just, uh, yeah, there, there was no ego about any of that stuff and brilliant fixes too. I have to say like that. Yeah. So I love that stuff. Yeah. And was there any improv or was there, was there, was it all pretty much sticking to the script? Mostly sticking to the script. Yeah. yeah. It was mostly not, sticking to the script. It didn't lend itself to a lot of improv right. And then when you would say how, how long, you know, you, you figuring out who you were going to be and you weren't sure on the first day, how do you kind of decide which, because every single character you play has such a completely different person, persona, person, there, like you're just a completely different Lisa Kudrow. I don't even see you ever, like I said before. And so what, how do you decide who, who she's gonna be and then how she sort of transformed over the, the series? Well, luckily well, I had gone in for a like hair makeup test and Greg Daniels was there and he sat with me for like two hours while we were doing all this. But he also directs, so, you know, I, he approaches the show, I think, from a lot of different facets. So that was really great. And um, yeah, so we were just talking things through about who she was, you know, and of course I'm asking, now why is she in prison? Um, he was just so great about me just getting to bounce stuff off of him, you know, mm -hmm. which I have mm -hmm. to say for me that I don't like about myself is sort of what I'm doing is getting permission to try something from them to do what you want to do to try something um, really well have you always been like that yes actually I have yeah. if someone else has you know written a character and you know I, I that to me is my biggest flaw is that I'm you know oh I hope this is what you had in mind am I doing it right you know that's just that's right. not the way but once I'm in the scene with the person, I can't help it, and I just do yes. something. And it just, you just become her. My worry is that I do something different on the next take. <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. not the same character. That's always my worry. But, um, because to me, it feels like it's different, and then I will look, and it's not, it's the same. I actually was the same human. But, yeah. <laughs> Something about it felt but different. But that's why you give them so many opportunities. You, you have so much for them to cut together and play with. It's probably a director's and editor's dream. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I do. Yeah, because that's what I feel like when you're doing something for the first time. You need options. Yeah. In case the character's like too pissy or too sweet or too something. So I kind of wanted to give them options of she's not flighty. She's not that sweet. So, yeah, and then right. see what works for the show. Yeah. Can I ask you something, Mom? Am I needy? In general, yes. Why else would my body have expelled you four weeks premature? You are literally sapping my resources. Oh, my God, I'm Pac-Man. Well, I don't understand that reference. I'm Pac-Man. I'm a hungry, empty ghost. Oh, that's actually very poetic. Can I borrow that for my book? And then with, with Feel Good, did you, did you, how did you come up with, with that? I mean, was that already written? It was written, yes. Yeah, yeah, so Martin and Joe Hampson is her writing partner. Um, and May is a stand-up. How old is she? Is she like, is she just 15, 16, 20? She's, I think, a, like a minute over 30. But she Amazing. looks like she's, yeah. 17, I don't know. Whatever she was yeah. going to say, I was going to say, okay, sure. I'm um, by it, right. They asked me to do this, and of course it shoots in the UK, so my first response is, I don't think so. Oh, no, okay, was this before or after Space Force? Before, way before. Before. So you yeah. get the call again, will you do this? 
and it shoots in the UK and you're like, oh, no. You're right. And I said, oh, dear. Well, oh. Well, I'll read it. And I went, uh-oh. These are all the script. They were all done. These are really, really, really good. Well, okay. Now I have to watch some May Martin stand up in interviews. And then I was just, there was no question but that I was getting on a plane and I was going to go to, I was going to go to the US. Yeah, no going back whatsoever. How stunning is she? She's absolutely stunning. And I'm, that is one of, that is such a beautiful piece of work. I just love every character. I love your relationship. Yeah. I love you. I, my heart breaks for you, even though you were mean, but I, yeah, you, yeah. you have that ability to play these characters that you just, you want, you should be kind of cringing at, but yet you, you have such empathy for them. Oh, good. You do. That's good. Yes. Yeah. And you really do. Lucas plays, uh, my husband in it and he's just so sweet and dear and nice. And he's so good. Adrian Lucas. So anyway, good. so good. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think that helps because there's this like profoundly decent, sweet man that is this woman. So what's going on? Right. What's going What's on? That? And yeah, she's going on terrified. Yeah. She's terrified is what it is, but also, yeah, she's an impossible woman too, but, but it's funny. I mean, luckily it's meant to be funny and I think that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like over the top, sort of insensitive or, well, what have I said? <laughs> I love that. So do you like being a part of, some, does it, do you enjoy when, I mean, because you produce, you produce so many different, different things. To be clear, neither of these two things, I'm not no, producing Space Force or Feel Good. Right, right. Just actor for But hire. that's my yeah. question is, how do you, do you enjoy being a part of some, is it, is it, you know, because when you are produ producing, you're, you're there from the ground up with, with, you know, coming up with the idea and the show and then the scripts and then the crew and then the cast. And then, so you're sort of a part of this team and then people come in. Do you find that to be more of a comfortable place to work from other than, the, or, or do, do you enjoy going into an already formed family and you're sort of going to be the guest family member for the time? I like being the guest family member for the time. You because do. More I, than producing your own things. When I'm producing huh. my own thing, that's different. But I, I'm kind of, I, I have a, a commitment issue since Friends, to be honest with you. Of what's, what does that look like? What do you mean? You just fear of committing to something because nothing will ever be as good as Friends? I understand. To a series. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. look, that was a... Friends, it was more than just, it's not like, oh, it was such hard work for 10 years. Um, you know, it's not that. It was that I know that show worked because we all committed to each other, too. Right. You know, it wasn't just committing to a role, committing like to a contract. I mean, we all still love each other. Yeah. And there aren't casts like that and no. that's why that worked and right. i think part of me like um well i'm i can't do that again yes i know it's, <laughs> i'm not I, gonna I, do I, that again well i don't think i don't think i see any we've always said to each other that if we were ever to go back to television in t in the way that we were on with fred we would have to be something that the at least just the three girls did together yeah right yeah. And I think because what I'm, I mean, I, with, with these other jo jobs that we've done, that, that's not, it's not the, you know, five, you know, camera, multicam type of experiences. It's, it's, it's hard to differentiate what we're, the television we're doing now from the film, from a film schedule, you know? Right. Yes. That's true. That's not as scary to me. But I mean, I have looked at, you know, a primetime network you know, if it's successful, if you're lucky enough for it to be successful. And, and that's what I've gotten close to doing because I thought, oh, it's fun and it's light and people need to be entertained and I want to do it. And then it's like, oh, but oh, 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 oh. <laughs>
I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Huh. Who's running it? How's it go? Uh, what are you going to do? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. But when I've created something myself, which I've only two shows that I've done that with, you know. Um, and so when I've done that, then I feel like um, it's okay because I have all the people around that it makes it okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm just becoming a fucking nut as I get older, <laughs> which is, you know, that's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> I love it. I just love your brain. It's maybe my happy place. How do you, though, how do you guys choose what you do? How, who, I mean, how did the ideas come up of what you, you're going to produce, you know? And, and uh, you, because you, there's such a variety. You did uh, the yeah. Christmas show, and then there was, um, the, oh. the, the, the game show. How did the game show come up? Well, that came up, oh, through, that came Mary, Mary McCormick and, um, and Michael Morris. Michael. Michael Morris, yeah. Yeah, Mary and Michael had this game, and, you know, they're very close with Dan Bukatinsky, right? Yes. That's the producing partner. And, um, and that's how we did that. And there are some things that, you know, Dan meant a lot to Dan to do also. Because you and Dan have been together for a long time, right? You and Dan? 15 years, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the first That's thing right. you did was the comeback, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we developed a pilot for Aisha Tyler. That was one of the first things we did, actually. Oh, wow. That's right. Yeah. But, um, but no, the comeback was the first thing that I created that, that we produced. That was the first thing. I, I, I love her. I love her so deeply. Really? And I think that story, uh, th that history of, of, of that show coming and then literally coming back, that just never happens. What was the span of time between the... the it, Nine years. Like almost a whole decade went by. How did that happen? What was the story behind that? I forget. Well, I mean, we were canceled. And then um, it just felt like there were different people at HBO and, um, and it just felt like, you know, they didn't have anything against the show in the first place, the people who were, you know, now there. And um, was it the same place? Was it HBO originally? HBO. It was wow. HBO, yeah. And then it just felt like enough time had passed and um, they felt like, you know, we would like to see more. So let's do a limited series. And it was only meant to be that second round. It was only meant to be a limited series. But because it started off as a regular series, this had to be season two, not like a special, or it couldn't be a limited series. But um, but that's what it was meant to be. So you had be. to pick up and where that. the last episode left off. We didn't though. We, we wanted to acknowledge that nine years had passed. <laughs> so we wanted, we really wanted to acknowledge that. Um, yeah. So we didn't have to, yeah, that's not what that it just meant. It just means for award considerations, it's in the cat, it can't be in the category of limited series because it was a series. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, but that was fun to figure out what that was. That was really fun. I like it. And I mean, it. to do it the second, so doing it 10 years later, how did it feel different? How did it feel different walking into her little red wig and her outfit? I mean, just no one breaks my heart. I just love her so. Oh, love her so much. It didn't feel different. It didn't at all. It was like riding a bike. I mean, the minute I put that wig back on my head, just to try yeah. it on, like you know, we, I, someone had to test it to see if I have the same wigs. I have the wigs. I have them. Heaven. Um, just putting it back on, I can't help it. She's just, there she is, you know, with all the... Yes. <laughs> there she is. I know exactly. It's like that, it's the, the, it's that character <laughs> thing. The minute you put that wig on, there you go. Her voice comes back. Everything about her. Yes. Now, oh, in, in, did you know that you were going to be kind of ahead of the, the, that you were sort of, it was a foreshadowing, you were going to be way ahead of the curve? when web therapy came out, that this was basically going to be the future? No, <laughs> not at all. I mean, because it wasn't allowed. That was why it was a joke. 
I mean, it was like the worst idea in the world. It was based on the worst idea in the world is what was web therapy was because right. This is like 2006 or 2007, you know, when someone was like, do a web series. And I went, why? Um, except then I thought, although, I mean, what would work just like, you gotta like, just fly straight into the storm. Okay. What, yeah. what would be on the internet? What kind of thing would it be? And I was like, people are doing a lot of things that are incomprehensible to me. They're dating online. They're looking for people online. They're shopping online. You can't try anything on, right? It's 2007, right? Yes. And I said, I oh my God. It. Oh, therapy. That would be the dumbest thing. And then people <laughs> could say like, oh no, no, I'm in therapy. I'm working on it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm doing that. I do it at lunch. Like, you know, it's like just because no one will watch anything longer than three minutes at the time, which is what everyone was saying. Series should only be like three to five minutes an episode. And so I don't know. I just thought the dumbest thing on earth is to offer therapy for three to five minutes. <laughs> right. And only five minutes. Yeah. But, you know, because the, the little improv sessions went longer. So it would be like seven minutes, then 10. Then you have Meryl Streep and it's like, well, we can't do a 20 minute session. So we have to cut it down. <laughs> but then you would probably let it go for 20 minutes, but then you would edit it after. We edited. Yeah. Thank God for editors. Yeah. And it was thank so God. breezy to shoot. It was really great. How much fun. It just It's like right now. You just get dressed from here up. Are you just wearing a shirt, Lise? Is that it? Okay. Well, you know me. You know how much I love nudity. You love it. I know how you love walking around in your in your <laughs> in your knickers. Just because pants are too confining. Confining. You know that's not me. And so that was all improv, right? It was improv. Yeah, yeah. We would we would write web therapy. Yeah, yeah. We, but you would have an outline of some kind. We had an outline of like what the story. We'd have like sort of like three stories. So that there's an arc. Yeah. Yeah, we did that. It was fun. It was really fun. I wanted you to do that. I know you did. And it's a real big, sad piece in my, my memory bank that it didn't happen. I think it was going to, it was going to happen. Yeah. And then we were canceled. We bring that back. How's Aaron? Aaron wants to go to a concert in the desert this weekend with this older Russian guy who I think is just using her to get information. 18 is that age where you make mistakes and figure some things out. Do you think I should let her go? Well, I just don't know how you can stop her. So since we've been in um, quarantine or staying home, have yes. you watched Friends? Have you? I know you did watch, you used to watch. Do you still watch Friends <laughs> episodes? I love it. I love stumbling on a Friends episode. You know what, I? Um, it's been fun. I have to say, I think I stumbled upon this one time where I was with Courtney and we were trying to find something. I don't, I don't know how we were, we were on the computer. We were trying to find something to reference, an old friend's thing. And then we stumbled on bloop, there's bloopers online, like 15 minutes worth of bloopers that we sat there at the computer, like two nerds watching these bloopers laughing at ourselves <laughs> like I've done it too <laughs> oh my gosh and then I the just like, we went down this wormhole of like <laughs> I don't even remember that like where did who comes up with this I don't know I that's I've done that hours watching the hours bloopers. sometimes more entertaining than the shows were themselves but do I have a favorite episode no, someone sent me clips of Friends episodes, and I was watching clips and going, oh my God, well, that's really good. Wow. Hey. Yeah. Here's what I love is when I watch it, when I watch an episode, I'll usually remember where we broke during the scene. You do? Well, always. Especially there was that scene with you, me, and Joey, and there was something oh. about you were saying, let's move back in together, move back. And I had been living with Joey, and that he let me eat spaghetti here, or I don't know. She lets you eat cookies over the sink. Yes. <laughs> Something so stupid that you and I would, but you and I would always get into these fits of laughter because you had this wonderful ability 
to, you were about to hit your punchline and you would do this adorable thing where you would break her. <laughs> you would say the punchline and then you would, <laughs> you would like, you, you, you were like, and you would always turn to the audience and say, I'm sorry, it's really funny. Yeah, I didn't want to say the punchline, right? Like, I, I wouldn't know. get to the punchline. So if I knew I was going, uh, yeah. I wouldn't say the punchline. I want to ruin it. No, but you would, <laughs> you would always, but you did have an ability to giggle at, like, to, to break during the punchline because you, as Lisa, also thought it was funny what Phoebe was saying. Right. Which, which was is so a endearing. Issue. And then I <laughs> And then I would watch you do that, and then I would break. We were terrible. We did not know how to keep our, our we were not. And then there was the scene when the bagpipes happened. The bagpipes? That one I just could not, there was two, I'm just remembering three. Sorry if I'm taking too much time. But the bagpipes where you started to sing full, 100% committed with the bagpipes as sounding like the bagpipe, I couldn't hold it together. You could, no one could hold it together. Then there was the, the, the episode where you all wanted to see my, I guess Rachel had a sex tape with, I don't know. And, and every time I went to take the tape and step my foot on it, all of your reactions were, were like, a, no, 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 I don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> and that took us about, I think, 45 minutes, just that piece to shoot because the laughing couldn't, we couldn't stop it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> what are your favorite? episodes of the friendship show well I feel like I'm going along with the crowd um, in that I just don't I don't watch the show I'm still not watching it in the hopes that one day we sit down and watch them <laughs> together no by the way that's something that will happen I think it should I think it should I think it would be a lot of fun for us yeah to do but something um, like that. but yes I mean I don't, I, I, I mean, just cause I see it over and over when we're at Ross's and we see Monica and Chan start undressing each other right in front of the window. Yes, yes, yes. Right. And then my, my eyes, eyes, my, my eyes. eyes, which I stole from Matthew Perry. Right. That's how Matthew Perry said things. That's exactly how Matthew Perry says it. I actually asked his permission before we shot it. I was like, I don't know if you've seen the rehearsals, but I'm saying my eyes, my eyes, like the way you do it. So I just need to know that that's okay with you. If not, I'll say it in a different way. And he was like, yeah, go for it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Matthew required us to ask permission when we would borrow Chandler's cadence, if I'm, if I'm correct. <laughs> I do think that was something that was required. No, I don't. We were like, but it's flattering. He's like, no, all right. I'm, yeah. I think it's going to be really fun also when we, if we ever get out of quarantine, get to do our reunion show. Yes, that will be really great. I can't wait to do that. I really can't wait to do that. I, I cannot wait. I can, it's also strange to think it would have already, it would already would have been shot and it already would have been aired and we would have been, it would have been a little bit of speck in our memory. Yeah. But yeah, it's gonna be fun. I don't know what, I, I'm still dying to know what it, it's- Yeah, we don't know everything I, about it. We need to say. Well, we don't know anything about it. What we do know, we can't say, and then we don't. I think because I think we're meant to be surprised by some things. We are. I know. I knew. I know that they want to have a bit of a, a of you know, for the us seeing things for the first time. I know that it's not a scripted. We know it's not scripted. That we know. Yeah. No. No. Um, no. 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 None of. I will not be Phoebe. At any I will point. not be Rachel. Although I kind of am. We are. You're, well, you are. We're all sort of little fragments of them. <laughs> Not really. <laughs>